Origami has maps in a bunch of places. You can put maps in your dashboard, there's maps in reports, there's maps on the location pages. But a particularly cool kind of map is something that's referred to as a GIS map, or a Geographical Information System map. The key thing about GIS maps is that they combine a geographical map with layers of data. And these types of maps can be very flexible, can show any number of things. Here's something New York City put together. This is a GIS map showing the five boroughs, and if I want to know where I can find public Wi-Fi, that's a lot of Wi-Fi. What if you want to know where you can launch your kayak? There you go. Botanical gardens, we got them. Now you can integrate this kind of a map into origami with layers of your origami data. Let's take a look. So I put GIS maps under the Cool Stuff menu. You might have it somewhere else. And here you can list any number of maps. You can define all sorts of different kinds. Hypothetically, let's say we're tracking playground incidents in Brooklyn. So a GIS map starts with a map zoomed in to a certain location. This is basically downtown Brooklyn. And you can have any number of layers that can be turned on or off. I have them all turned off right now. That's probably not how you would set it up, but just for demonstration purposes. And this is a street map. You can have all kinds of different kinds of maps. Some people like the satellite view, a little more topographical view, but we'll stick with the street view. Now, on top of this map, I am layering several publicly available GIS maps. For example, in New York City, I can know where all the police precinct boundaries are. Just in case it's a police matter, might be handy. You see the blue lines get added. I'm trying to track playgrounds. Might be useful to know where all the waterfront parks are. I'll collapse the map types. Here you see, that's Brooklyn Bridge Park, very cool. That's Governor's Island, also cool. And maybe I don't want just the waterfront parks, I want all the parks. We got layers for that. Can't forget Fort Green Park, that's a nice one. There's a tremendous amount of publicly available GIS maps. Any of these can be integrated into origami. Now that's nice, but the cool part is to integrate these layered maps with data stored in origami. So in this somewhat silly example, we're tracking playground incidents as incidents of different types, and we've created layers for different queries of origami data. If I want to know where the most bullying incidents are happening, I can show that layer. What about the dreaded swing injuries? Well, they're probably where the swings are. And you might want to know where really bad injuries have happened or just the kid lawyered up. Phew, I didn't see any of those. So in this case, each of these is an incident in origami. I can click on them to get basic details. You can define which details are going to be shown. This is little Bobby who got hurt on the swing. I can click the view to go straight to the incident page. So how did we create all of that? Let's take a look. I'll click on the Edit GIS Map button. This is going to show how this whole thing was created. So at the top, you see some basic stuff. I gave it a name. That's how I find it in the first place. I define kind of the initial map setting. Where is it centered? What's the zoom level? It was zoomed in pretty, pretty tight right on downtown Brooklyn. And what's the initial map? I start with the street map, but you can choose whatever. Next, you've got settings for the kind of built-in widgets for these types of maps. The layer list, where do you want it? I like it in the top right. Do you want to show it? Do you want to have that little expander thingy that shows and hides it? I like the layers always there. But the base map, I like the expander, and I put that in the top left. And coordinate conversion will give you the x, y, longitude, latitude. That seems a little noisy to me, so I left that off. But you can add that as well. But now the cool part are the layers. And there's three types of layers, and I'm using two of them in this map. I'm going to go to the very bottom to show you the first type, which is what we call an external feature layer. That's a GIS map that somebody has published. It's out there, stored somewhere, and the most important thing you need to know is the URL. You can set the opacity that, that will make the map look nice, because remember these are layers, they stack one on top of the next, so sometimes you don't want to completely obliterate something underneath. This pop-up template is what appears when I click on the thing. You have to know something about your map to define this. It takes a little bit of knowledge of GIS mapping. And then finally you label it and you decide if it shows right at the beginning. This is typically true, but I set it to false just for the demo. These were the feature layers, the waterfront parks, the regular parks, and the police precincts. Another type of layer is an origami data layer. And for this, they're pretty simple to create. 
you decide what the marker is going to look like, the color, is it a circle, a diamond, what, it, what is it? And then you do your filter. In this case, this was the major injury or lawyered up. And then the query that you define is just like any other view or report filter you do anywhere else in origami. This was on incidents. Filters incident type is equal to playground incident and we either got a major injury that's a fatality or an amputation or lawsuit filed is true. You lawyer it up. You decide which columns appear, that's in the pop-up. And then you've got to tell origami where the longitude and latitude is. And typically there are fields for the accident latitude and the accident longitude and that's where you're storing it. So this is the major injury or lawyered up. This was the dreaded swing injuries. This was the bullying incident. If I want to create a new one, that's easy. First, I just pick which kind. External feature layer, those are the maps, the layers for the map. And finally, let's do another origami risk data layer. Select that, let's give it a title. Let's say kids dropping their ice cream. That's a calamity. We'll make this one a diamond. We'll give it some color, and you can add text for the marker. This one we'll just leave blank. And now we gotta define our query. Well, first, what area of the system are you querying on? You can query on everything in the system. <clears throat> in this case, we're doing incidents. Well, it's not all incidents, it's certain types. <clears throat> so first of all, the incident type is playground incident, and the cause is dropped ice cream. Terrible. We use the edit columns link to decide what will appear in the pop-up when you click on it. So let's put the name, the cause description, and the loss date. And again, very important, we have to indicate where the longitude and latitude are stored on the item. And there you have it. I've defined an origami data layer. Now right now, it's at the bottom. So it's going to be, other things are going to be on top of it and they might make it hard to see. So I might want to move it up. Let's move it to the top of the list. All right, it's at the top. You know, for dramatic effect, I'm going to make it not initially visible. So let's take a look. Click Save. So here's our map. Again, we've only got waterfront parks visible. We'll add the other parks. Our dreaded swing injuries and our bullying incidents. Where are the kids dropping ice cream? Well, little Bobby's having a rough day. He fell on the swings, and now he dropped his ice cream. And that's it. That's how easy it is to create data layers in GIS maps in Origami Risk.